I thought I was so uh, bad, wrong, ugly. When I was young, I didn't have a role model to look up to. You need to accept yourself the way you are. If you've got big size 12 feet like me, well, God, you're going to be spending a couple of hundred dollars a, a pair of shoes. When you come out as a Lesbitarian, they go, you just need to be fucked right. Tonight, the new Mr. Gay New Zealand talks about transforming his life. Hi and welcome to Gay Talk Tonight. My guest is Chris Olwage. He's the newly crowned Mr. Gay New Zealand. And you may find there's more to this man than meets the eye. Chris Olwage is a South African man who moved to New Zealand with his family several years ago. He's well known on Auckland's gay scene and just last month was voted Mr Gay New Zealand. He may also seem familiar because he was a semi-finalist in last year's New Zealand's Got Talent. Chris, uh, really great to see you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, we just had the Pride Parade. You were right out the front of the marching boys there. What, what, what was the experience like? It was a, it was a mixed experience. Um, for one, I was it was put right out in front by myself and was oftentimes by myself for a long stretch of road and having to occupy that amount of space with just a little me was pretty daunting. But on the other hand, the warmth that I felt from the crowd um, was immensely gratifying. It was just, it was quite an amazing and special feeling. Um, sort of being welcomed by people that I didn't even know. And I think being in the front as I was and not part of the actual marching group, I was able to obviously do a bit more sort of PR with the crowd and so people who knew me called me over and said hi, congratulations and you know, did the obligatory friend thing. But um, along the way my mother called out to me and I didn't realise she was even <laughs> going to be there. So um, that was some, a truly special moment and I could see the sort of pride in her eyes as well. So I, um, yeah, it was a really touching moment. And of course that's what it's all about, the whole, it the was, whole festival. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I think the, the campaign for it was one community and our solidarity together. And it was, um, all that day it didn't feel like, you know, we were a community apart from everyone else. It did feel like we were just one community as a whole. Now of course you were wearing the sash of Mr Gay New Zealand because you've just become that, so congratulations. Thank you very much. And, and what was that night like? That must have been very exciting. What people don't know is that that competition actually started earlier that week with the online polls and so forth. So we'd already started the campaigning a whole week before that weekend had even begun. And we had our um, initial meeting the Saturday before Big Gay Out and got to meet the other contestants and sort of had our dinner and Andy told us about the role and what might be expected of us and then of course, come Sunday, it was campaign, 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 and the challenges, I and mean, we had our charity challenge, we had our sports challenge, our um, GLBTI quiz. Um, do we know much about the world politics, local politics? Um, just general sort of facts about gay and lesbian trivia. And then, of course, there was the, the pageantry in the evening. And so by the time it, it got all round and done up, we were so <laughs> exhausted. But it was truly an amazing day. Um, I had so much fun and I'm still sort of in a daze about it all. Um, so what do you hope to do with it? Because I, I, I've read that you believe it's more than just a competition, that you, that you actually see it as a way of advocating, uh, advocating for, for queer youth. So, so what do you hope to do? Well, that is exactly right. Um, because people um, think it is just a pageant and, you know, we're just there to sort of represent the community as a pretty face, but I think um, having the title, we need to be more than that. We need to be ambassadors. We need to put ourselves forward and stand up for things in the community where previous someone might have been sort of reluctant to have done so. Um, and so we need to kind of put our image out there and put it on, out on behalf of those who can't. Because visibility is still important for young people. I know. Oh, it is. It is. It is. I mean, I grew up when I when I grew up in school, um, gay was. It was an, a taboo subject. Um, I grew up in a very sort of heavily Protestant Christian upbringing, so everything of the homosexual tendency was of the devil and demon inspired. And so, um, yeah, no, it was a very lonely, very isolating experience growing up. And I believe there is still some of that going around here in New Zealand. Um, 
And there are a lot of places are becoming more accepting of it. I mean, you see kids coming out now during their high school days, and it's like, wow, I could never even imagine have doing something like that. I, I would have been ostracized and strung up by my toes if I had. And I think for those kids who feel like that might be the same situation for them, we need to let them know that there is a safe place and it does get better for them. Um, maybe not in the, in the actual circumstances they're in now, but you know, there will come a time when they're separated from those and then they can be who they are and feel free to explore those sides of themselves that they've had to sort of neglect or hide. And I think sharing our stories, and one of the things that I've always been impressed about your story is that you came from a, a, a bullying background, but you also dealt with childhood obesity and you've transformed your life and that is inspiring for, for other young, young guys and girls. It's, very, it's always very hard when someone says it's very inspiring because it was just my journey and everybody has a journey and some people's are far more inspirational than my own, but I, I do kind of feel slightly blessed when people say, you know, we, we've heard your story and we feel truly inspired growing up and coming to know that I was homosexual in an environment that it meant that I couldn't explore that aspect. It obviously caused the depression, the depression caused the overeating and the eating caused the obesity. And so it just sort of, it compounded itself into a situation where I was in a very bad way. And um, yeah, there are a lot of evil things that happened back then and not a lot of it to myself, um, me doing silly things to myself because I wasn't happy with who I was and my situation in life. But it is a journey, isn't it? It takes it time is a journey and, and it perseverance. Does, it does take time and that's the thing. There is no magic pill and there is no sort of, um, you know, something that's just going to come along and make it all better. It is, it was a gradual process. I mean, there was the, the, the light and the dark tunnel moment where I was like, I can be better. But from that moment to when it actually did become better, that was years apart. I mean, people think that I dropped the weight just like that and, and you know, I was suddenly a happier person. I was like, no, no. I was still in the same situation that I was, but I knew in myself that things would get better and so changed my disposition towards it. I was like, well, I'll be the boy that they want me to be here and I know that one day I'll be able to be the boy that I want to be. And so I'll just placate the need for now until I can later discover it for myself. Uh, so now let's take a look at New Zealand's Got Talent because you were a semi-finalist in that. I was um, indeed. Amazing experience, I can imagine. I'm still in awe about the whole experience. I mean, I went into the competition knowing, you know, that I would never win it um, because I think singers, especially in New Zealand, always come up trumps with that. It's, it's an art form that's more easily read and understood than dance. And what I was doing was certainly not um, mainstream by any means. So, um, yeah, they, um, we, I was frightened to death of it, to be honest. Um, putting something out there, and especially something so uniquely different from what anybody else was doing, was, was frightening. Um, I remember the week going up to that, I think half the reason I looked as good on stage is because I couldn't eat because of the nerves. <laughs> but you, you get to that situation, you know, like you have to eat something, but you can't. Um, and on the day, it was just, I was a wreck, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm used to being judged for something, but then being judged on a, on, a, on a national scale is another sort of um, thing that you have to come to grips with. And especially with dance, I mean, coming to dance as late in my life as I did, I know I'm not the most proficient technically, but I think what I lack in technique, I make up for in um, passion. And to put something out there like dancing on point, which is truly, it's a very, it's a skill-based art form. You spend years and years and years dedicating your life, your feet, your, your extra hours of the day to be able to perfect the form. And I just decided to stop on a pair of point shoes six weeks before the initial audition and hope to God that I could stand on my toes. And well, we got there. And like I said, passion made up for everything else that I lacked. And you were able to deliver something that was quite unique. And I think a lot of people really enjoyed it. Uh, so tell me if you have any thoughts about what it takes to have a happy, fulfilled or successful kind of life. I think it's a friend-based thing, it's a community thing. Um, I think, yes, having someone you can claim as your partner, your lover, your, your one and only, your soulmate, that certainly helps. But I think it's also having a strong network around you of people that you trust 
and I think you can have as much money in the world, but it's never going to make you any happier. And so I've decided a long time ago, I'd rather be poor and fulfilled than, than rich and unhappy. And I think just having that core, those core people around you who keep you on the right track and keep your, your feet on the ground and who you know that will have your back through thick and thin, I think that's really important. And any, anything you do from that point will be seen as successful because you will have had to have shared it with those people. And it's, it's a shared thing. Um, but yeah, it's a difficult question because that view also changes over time as to what you believe. Because what happens once you achieve the thing that you believe that creates your success, then there's just another level to it, isn't there? So I think it's just being in the moment and being happy with what you've been able to achieve and then just always striving to be better in yourself. That's fantastic. Chris Always, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Next week, a young man from Timaru is making a big splash in musical theatre. Well, that's Gay Talk tonight for another week. I will see you here next Sunday. <laughs>